I've highlighted misunderstanding the tool's philosophy or intent because I think this can have a dramatic impact on whether or not a tool will assist you and you'll truly realize the tool's benefits or the estimated ROI. I've selected IBM Rational's Requisite Pro and Borland's Caliber RM because I've used both tools on projects. There are other popular requirement tools, for example DOORS, but I haven't used this tool as extensive to be able to provide a comparison. So let's look at the two tools. IBM Rational's Requisite Pro is an event-centric solution. In Microsoft Word, you can create a requirement document like a use case and have Requisite Pro manage those requirements. You may change requirements either in Rec Pro or in Word, and they will stay in sync. The Rec Pro requirements and the Word document are both living artifacts. This is not magical, though. Requisite Pro has a very tight integration with Microsoft Word. The Word document is placed under control of Requisite Pro by tagging requirements in the Word document. Later on in this presentation, I will briefly show tag requirements in the Requisite Pro tip section. Let's look at Borland. Borland's Caliber RM is a data-centric solution. For example, in Microsoft Word, you can create a requirement document like a use case and have Caliber RM manage those requirements by importing the requirements from Word. However, the Word document is no longer the keeper of the requirements. Rather, it's Caliber RM. If you change the requirement in the Word document, it will be out of sync with Caliber RM you would have to re-import the requirement or manually enter the requirement into Caliber RM to keep them in sync. Please note, this slide is not meant to indicate that one tool is really better than the other because I believe both IBM Rational's Requisite Pro and Borland's Caliber RM have their strengths and weaknesses. Rather, it's meant to illustrate that an understanding of the tool and how it was built should influence our tool selection process and how we would work with it. Last thing I'd like to say is that if you want some non-biased assistance, while you're doing your tool evaluation or tool selection, please feel free to contact us. The last page of the presentation will contain our contact information. Where are we? In this upcoming section, we'll discuss some pragmatic Requisite Pro tips. We'll cover establishing requirement types, agreeing on requirement granularity, structuring requirements in Requisite Pro, determining and managing traceability, sharing requirements with non-Requisite Pro users, and last, We'll talk about using Requisite Web. Establishing requirement types. So what is a requirement type? A requirement type serves as a template for all requirements of the same form and is useful for classifying or grouping similar requirements in a project and each requirement type has a unique set of user-defined attributes. The first thing a product team or each software engineering process group should do is agree upon the requirement types. And they should be asking, what are the requirement types? How many requirement types will we need? What criteria is going to distinguish one requirement type from another? Often we see clients over-specifying the requirement types. One client in particular was insistent they had 46 different requirement types. Yes, I said 46. Usually when I see clients getting above a handful of requirement types, there is a misunderstanding between requirements and requirement types. Or they're also trying to house their design specification detail within Requisite Pro. Our initial recommendation is for you to form your core requirement types. If you're following a use case driven approach, we recommend starting with only four requirement types. They are stakeholder request, product features, system use case, and glossary. Lastly, we find many organizations struggle with correctly documenting supplementary requirements. We recommend that you grow into using supplementary or SUP requirements. At first, SUP requirements are usually captured as product features, but as you mature with the tool and your software development process, you'll then migrate to using SUP requirement types. On this slide, I graphically depicted a variety of requirement types. The directed lines indicate dependencies between the requirement types. Your stakeholder request should drive your product features. Your stakeholder request can drive your supplementary or sub requirements. Sub requirements can also manifest themselves from standards like security, Sarbanes Oxley, usability, and so on. Your product features will drive your system use cases, and system use cases can reference and adhere to sub requirements. Your system use cases will drive your test cases. Test cases are not among the requirement types we initially recommended, but I included it so you may see the flow. And on the right side of the picture, you will see we have a glossary. Your glossary will define any terms pertinent to your project or to your organization. On this slide, I'm showing the default set of requirement types provided by Requisite Pro version 701 when you select to create a new project using the use case template. On the right side of this picture, you see now see the default requirement types. First one is feature. This requirement type is used to indicate all feature requirements for the project. The next one is none. 
This requirement type should be the default for any document type that will be used for documents not containing requirements. For example, the requirements management plan. Stakeholder request. This requirement type is used to indicate all stakeholder request requirements for the project. If your team is using rational ClearQuest, it is recommended to use ClearQuest to manage stakeholder enhancement requests though. Supplementary. This requirement type is used to identify all supplemental requirements for the project. There is an inconsistency at times though in Rec Pro. Sometimes they refer to the supplemental requirements as SUPL, SUPL, and other times they refer to it as SUPP, SUP. I just bring that up so that you are aware of this as you work in the tool. Term. This requirement type identifies all glossary terms within the project. And use case. This requirement type defines all requirements related to a system use case in the project. Should we customize the requirement type attributes? We recommend that you use the core set of requirement attributes until you achieve a 30 to 50 percent improvement in time to market due to process improvements. Prior to these process improvement levels, we feel it's a noble but often wasted effort to pursue customization. The core set of requirement attributes will be provided on the next page so you can see how comprehensive they actually are out of the box. Here we have the default requirement type attributes. I'll give you a moment to look this over, but you should see that the defaults provided by Requisite Pro are rather comprehensive. So to wrap up the tip on establishing requirement types, I like to simply say, don't be afraid to start small when working with requirement types. Agreeing on requirement granularity. When capturing requirements in your use case specifications, we recommend that you tag your requirements at the flow level. As you can see in the slide animation, I've highlighted the major flows, and they are purchase items, invalid customer credentials, customer quits purchasing items, customer modifies ordered items, and customer changes payment method. Each one of these flows will be tagged as individual requirements. However, in flow A, purchase items, the steps 1 through 8, would not be tagged as individual requirements. Rather, they would be contained within the requirement purchase items. Start with our recommendation as your base principle, and if you feel you need more detail, then you can always deviate. But please be wary of deviation. Remember, the more you have, the more you need to track and maintain. I usually like to work backwards on this and see how Quality Assurance would be conducting the system or functional testing. If their testing is more flow-based, then this will suffice for tagging requirements. Try our recommendation on several of your iterations or projects to see if this level of granularity will be sufficient for you. On this slide, I'm displaying a portion of a use case specification. In this example, Flow A purchase items from the previous slide is being shown in more detail. This is an actual use case specification that had been created in Microsoft Word, and I've leveraged the tagging capabilities from Requisite Pro to mark the requirement. Just a brief side note, when you install Requisite Pro, it will add extensions to Microsoft Word to provide you with these new tagging capabilities. On this slide, I've highlighted in orange the tag UC2.2 that I've created. Due to how I've tagged it, everything that is shown on this page will be tracked in Requisite Pro as a single requirement. On this slide, I'm continuing to display the rest of the use case specification. In this example, I've gone ahead and tagged the alternate flows as requirements. As you can see, each tag requirement starts with a left bracket, the letters UC for the use case requirement type, and a numerical number which will be automatically assigned by Requisite Pro. Finally, each tag requirement will end with a right bracket. To help distinguish the tags, I've also been highlighting them in orange and red. On the previous page, I only accounted for flows B through E. So that should result in only four tag requirements, but on this slide, I actually have six tag requirements. Why is that? Tags UC 2.4.1 and 2.4.2 are all alternates of the flow 2.4 customer quits purchasing items, and one could argue that these are also alternate flows so I decided to tag them as individual requirements as well. To wrap up this tip on requirement granularity, I like to quote Albert Einstein. Anyone can make something complex, but it takes a genius to make it simple. So when you're establishing requirement granularity, let's start with simple first.